Did you think being in the trades would lead to you manufacturing electronic equipment? Never crossed my mind a moment in my many years. <laughs> the good thing is, in the trades, you, you've got experience working with your hands. Yes. Yes, big time. Building things. Building things. I've, I've built things. My first jobs, one of my first jobs was building trophies. So I learned to assemble things, and that's kind of what led me into all that path. What electronic equipment, soldering, testing, Never had an interest in elect becoming an electrician ever in my life. Yeah, uh, me either. The closest I ever got, I guess, with electronics was building computers, but I'd never soldered the components or anything. It was yeah, all plug it in. Play. You bet. Yep. Plug it in, screw it together. But now you assemble, test, we've designed yep. electronic equipment. Pretty much every day. Yep. I've been working on new things still. I mean, it, it doesn't stop now. Well, what's your favorite part about doing it? The one thing that, like, truly, in my mind, would let me switch over from building big buildings with my hands and mechanical rooms and taking care of people and putting out for people, I get to build with my hands still. I still get to teach people. And, like, that was one of my favorite things in the trade was Learning from people, being able to build, and being able to pass that wisdom down. And now I get to teach people leak detection and how to do it and train them on it. And, you know, I've studied it well. It's been great. And build the equipment. And build the equipment every day. And pack it and ship it. And, and yes, I, you're a one man company. You're right a one man company right now. Uh, you know, it'll be, be bringing somebody on here before long. It's been going good, it's doing well, which has been great. But, I love building it. I love doing it and being a part of it all. It's it, it, it's wonderful. Tradesmen built America. Not policymakers or desk jockeys, but hardworking, blue-collared men and women. Join me, Roger Wakefield, on conversations with some of the nation's most successful skilled laborers. This is The Trade Talks. Tell everybody who you are and what you do right now. Well... I'm Henry Wakefield, uh, CEO of Leak Pro. I manufacture leak detection equipment for finding water leaks under slab, in the yards, anywhere pretty much. It's an acoustical equipment. It's all based on sound. And it's like geophones on steroids. And geophones with batteries on steroids. With batteries on steroids. The, yes. the electronic <laughs> parts are really, really cool. You got into the trade. 2000, 2005, somewhere in there? Yeah. Uh, it was probably, I guess it was 01, 02, because I graduated 01. And really, the next job I got was, I believe, citywide mechanical doing doing plumbing. You've done plumbing. You've done pipe fitting. Yep. You've built big, big buildings. Now you're building little bitty electronic pieces. Yeah. It's a little bit different. It is. But the the benefit of it. First of all, you know, you're my son. A lot of people know yep. that. Uh, we acquired Leak Pro the beginning of 2023. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of went and started learning it just slightly before that, but then everything settled out and everything early 23. Right. You had done leak detection before, Le leak detection work. Yep. Not just me. You've got other family members that are in plumbing. Yeah. Been in it for years. Yep. Did it for some of my commercial jobs. And I, re I remember when... God, you probably started plumbing at about the age of 12 or 13. Remember taking you with me to, to work on jobs. And it may have even been before that. I know you got into pipe fitting, but, but I know you still have a connection to plumbing. And lead detection to me is huge. Yep. I tell every plumbing company, if you want to grow your business, lead detection it is a phenomenal way to do it. Because right now, most plumbing companies sub out their work to another leak detection company. Nothing wrong with that. But man, why not take in house what you're subbing out? You make the profits then. Yeah. And you can train your people to be as accurate as, as anything. But you went pipe fitting. So you started out in plumbing, then you go pipe fitting. Now, in a way, you're back in plumbing again. Yes, I am. I, 
not a hundred percent, but yes, I well, yeah, okay, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, you don't own a plumbing company. That's you, it. You're 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 able to go out and do leak detection if you want to. Yep. You know, very interesting stuff. Yeah. But going out and learning about Leak Pro and for anybody who wants to go check it out, it's www.leak dash pro.com training and equipment so so let's start with the let's start with the equipment and, and and there's multiple pieces and there's different reasons for each piece yes and you know when i go on jobs i tell everybody I always start with the sidekick because because i'm gonna check the meter check the valve box boom 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 explain the sidekick what it is and what makes it special so the sidekick uh, it's a it's our piece of equipment that has a pistol grip, so it's very comfortable in the hands to carry around one-handed, which is really nice. But it comes with an aluminum rod, and the difference between the aluminum rod on it and the stainless rod on the other one is aluminum carries the sound better. It's a less dense metal, so the sound travels through it easier, making it louder through your headphones. So it's easy to determine the noise level, and then the higher the noise, the closer you are to the leak. Okay. And it's it's, it's easy to maneuver. And look, I started out in in leak detection with geophones, the, these okay. big clunky pieces of brass, and, and I can't tell you how many times I've busted my eardrums. <laughs> it's an old antiquated system. It, it, it's literally it's it's a stethoscope. It's like doctors use. But you've got these brass receptors that sit on the ground and and pick up the noise through that. They're good. Uh, I mean that they, they do that they work. Yep. But man, evolution has come along. I, I moved from that to uh subsurface and, and, and leaktronics. You know, they're they're good but they're bulky. Uh you know, subsurface and leaktronics have this you know, subsurface is one that they've got a belt for it. You you strap the belt on. Leaktronics has, has a neck lanyard for it. Yep. Where it hangs around your neck. So you've got headphones that go to this big bulky unit, then come out and go to a probe or a wand or something like that. And, and me being in a house, bending over, getting up under cabinets, looking for angle stops, because a lot of times people yeah. have stuff in those cabinets. Uh, it, it's kind of a, a pain. Yep. It, 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 it's like, man, look. I've banged up people's cabinets and, and felt pretty guilty about it. I uh, chipped the countertop one time because I bent down it and the unit swung over and hit it. Uh, told the lady about it. Thank God she said, you know what, that's a little bitty. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> was, yeah. No, a lot of homers be like, change it out. That's another one. I want to be like, wait, wait, be like, wait what? Yep. I just bumped into it. It's a just chip a that, yeah, is like the pin of a needle. And I just felt like I needed to tell you. And then, my problem with those were there's a lot of adjustments. They want you to be able to adjust high frequencies, low frequencies, mid-level frequencies. And I'm a plumber. Yes. I don't know what frequencies I need. That's, yeah. Like I get some leak detection, like specialty people that want all the adjustments and everything. And they're like, well, where's the adjustment in yours? Said, Look, mine is very simple. We've kept ours geared more towards plumbers. You bet. My adjustment You've got a volume knob on your headphones. And I use that to to pinpoint when I'm getting close. Start turning that volume down so that you can truly figure out that loud spot. And that helps. Now, 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 Terry used to tell me, and, and, and look, I love Terry, turn the volume all the way up. Boy, he'd yell like, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up all the way. Yeah. Terry, I don't need it up. I'm, I, my hearing is great. That's it. I, t- I don't turn my volume all the way up. Do you? Uh, when you listen, I do occasionally, kind of more when I'm actually listening on the slab. Okay, not initially when I'm listening to the meters and the valves and things like that. I make sure to turn it down because it can get pretty loud. Man, if you get one screaming, you, you, you'll uh, you'll know real quick or just bumping. Uh, you know that's the good thing about ours is it's got a trigger, but occasionally you'll be touching that trigger and you'll accidentally bump something. Oh no, else. I don't. <laughs> uh, well, one once you do that and you hit that hard enough, you learn pretty quick. I've literally put. I was pushing it on an angle stop one day, and I'm squeezing the trigger, and it slides off the angle stop. It hits the wall, and I mean, I thought, I'm deaf. Yep. I thought, that's it. They're busted. They're gone. All the switches, all the adjustments, all the frequencies, and all that, 
I hated it because I'm like, okay, what frequency do I need to be on for this? What do I need to be on for that? Do I turn the gain up? Do I turn the gain down? And and, and then you, you've got switches and knobs, and it's like it, it's it's a uh, it's too much. Yep. Leap Pro. There's it, it's set up straight acoustics. You hear what the microphone hears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like somebody asked me the other day, how often do I got to send it in for calibration? You don't. It's all it's all built in. We have got it built. There's so many parts and pieces in built in and that control panel. to control them that to keep it exact all the time. So and I call it a control panel. It's it's a yeah, PC it, board. It's a circuit board. Yeah, okay, circuit it. board. Mm-hmm. But there's things built in there. Correct for adjustments and and it it does what it's supposed to do. That's right. People ask me that, Roger, how's this work? So it works really freaking good. Yeah. I know. I liked your old one. You're like, look, there's just, the Wizard of Oz is down inside here telling you what you Man, need. <laughs> squeeze the button, it's on, let go, it's off. That, that's it. That's it. And then turn the volume up if you need to. So the Leak Probe is a little bit different because it's got a stainless steel rod to keep it from bending. It does. Yes. So it's got a stainless steel rod. Uh, it's a T-handle style made for probing down into the ground. The head of it's built out of a solid block of aluminum. So it's the most durable, sturdy piece of equipment that we've got. It comes with that stainless steel rod. That way, when you are probing down to get closer to your line and to, and to get a better listen, if there's rocks and stuff, it, it's not going to tear up your equipment. Your equipment's going to last. Uh, we've seen one in shipping get bent to heck. Not the stainless steel, but an aluminum rod. Yes. I've never seen another one get bent, so he, he, especially the probe. Correct. I did have a guy call one time. He says, man, I bent my rod a little bit on the sidekick. Is it going to hurt it? And I'm like, no. Yep. You're just going to have to line, line up a little bit different. The, let's go back to the probe, the, the stainless steel. That rod's, what, three feet long? Uh, about three and a half, yeah. Okay. It's, it, it's a good length. It'll uh, go pretty deep. It will. Uh, the sidekick's just a little bit shorter than that, not much. We did keep it longer. But like you were saying, when you're up under cabinets and somebody's got a lot of stuff in there and stuff, we wanted to keep that long right so that you're not having to get inside of it with the equipment. You can actually poke it right through and get to your stop. Uh, and and I, oh, look, I love that. It, it uh, when I remember the first day I met Terry, and you know Terry's the guy who originally came up with the idea of Leak Pro. He designed this. I remember the day I went and met him. I was with Meter Dog. They were meeting him in San Diego at a, at a, at a hardware store parking lot. <laughs> so l- literally, uh, Will and I got in a convertible, rented, drove down to San Diego, went and met them here. And Terry's got this, uh, God, I don't remember if he was in a Jeep at the time or a trailer. But I think it was the Jeep. Okay. But he had the unit mounted on the back. He had a box for it that mounted where the tire goes on the Jeep. He pulls out this unit, and, and I literally, I, I put it on a, uh, Stick the headphones on and, and always touch it because I, I want to know sensitivity. And I tapped it and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yes. You can hear this. That's the same reaction I get from most people. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's like, here, touch it. You know, and they're, they're kind of like, they, they hear, they watch me do it. But then it's like, no, here, you touch it so that you know I, I am barely. Yeah, I'm not scraping this. my thumbnail on it. Yeah, I'm not trying I'm to. I'm just like, literally sliding my finger on it and you can hear. That's it. Yeah. Well, I remember uh, I put on the headphones, squeezed the trigger, and, and I just, I tap it really lightly. And it's like, boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Yep. And I like touching it again, like, wow, that's real. And it blew my mind. Okay. The probe, stainless steel rod, so it won't bend, so it'll go deeper. But I've found many leaks in yards with that. Yes. Oh, yeah. It works just as well as the sidekick. It's not quite as loud, you know, which is why we prefer the sidekick for slab leaks. When you're actually listening through that concrete, you want that little extra lift. The probe works great, though. It's a clear sound on the probe, a little more clear than on the sidekick. The sidekick enhances the sound, so it feels more like a scream. Uh, I have noticed that over the years, that the probe's just a smoother sound. And any plumber out there that's ever used a probing rod mm-hmm. knows exactly what it's like when, when when you go in, you know, three feet 
four feet and, yep. and you hit something, it's like, okay, I keep moving around and, and I keep ending up right here. Right here. Yep. And then to be able to do that, stick that probe in the ground, squeeze the butt and hear water screaming. You're like, okay, guess what? Yep. It's nice. And then lower, you can move six inches to a foot one way, six inches to a foot the other. And, and where do you hit the loudest? That's it. And, and man, I've landed dead nuts on top of leaks before and just like that. Yep. Is there any difference really in the way they're built? Not too much. Uh, well, a little bit. So right now the probe comes with a nine volt battery that powers it. Uh, the sidekick currently comes with an A23 battery. Okay. Uh, now I do have new circuit boards that'll be coming before long. We've been brought, brought it a little more modern. Okay. Uh, cause some years have been passed since there wasn't a lot of changes. So we got a new one tuned in. Uh, it'll all be A23 batteries, and that'll end up going in all of the equipment okay. over time. Good. And the A23s are a 12 volt, but they'll it's last a little, little bit longer. 12, 12 volt battery, yes, okay. sir. Cool. When when I walk up to the house, like I said, I'll look at the meter first. Is the meter spinning? Mm-hmm. You know, customers said they've got a water leak. I've opened meters before, don't spin. Put, yep. put a sidekick on them, they don't make a noise. Go up to the valve box at the house, they don't make a noise. And then go outside and say, hey, I don't think y'all have a leak. Yep. But when you do open that meter and there is a leak, again, start at the meter, listen to it. How, can I hear it screaming? Walk up to the house if there's a valve box. Can I hear it screaming? If not a valve box, the hose bib. Yep. You know, get on the hose bib right there by the front entryway. Chances are the, the valve box is going to be near that. Mm-hmm. Then the next thing is, is turn off the water at the valve box where you're isolating the house from the yard. And see if the meter's still spinning. Yes. And if it is, the leak's in the yard. I mean, it's pretty easy. Yep. Then we try to isolate the irrigation system, swimming pool, anything at all that there may be. Yes. I'm still using the sidekick at this point. Yep. Just because I want to hear better. Uh Uh-huh. Now the leak's in the yard. What do they need to do now? Well, so now, after you kind of isolate the irrigation and the pools and stuff like that, and you truly know, okay, it's in this line. Well, then you're going to go back. You're going to take a listen to the meter. Take a listen to your isolation valve. Take it. Listen to every isolation valve in that system that you can put your equipment on. Okay. One of those is going to be louder than all the others. That's the closest one to your leak. Okay. So then you want to trace over the line and start listening down that line. You may have to locate the line so that you do know exactly where all the lines are. Sometimes you kind of have a good idea. Most most lines from the meter to the home are pretty straight. They don't pretty straight. They don't. I, too I just don't like to isolate every line. But I want to yeah. know exact. If I'm six inches off or twelve inches off, it may be I may be twelve inches off and not hear it as loud. And I think okay, I'm getting far away from it when I'm really not. I'm just yeah. not dead nuts over the line. Correct. It, it's worth going ahead and, and locating real quick. Just I mean, it's not too hard most of the time. Uh, as long as you've got a tracer wire or it's copper, then it doesn't take long. And there's a lot of people doing a lot of crazy things these days. But if there's a valve at the house, if there's the connection at the meter, which there is, if there's room to connect it and pull it apart, you could even feed a wire through it correct, to install your own tracer wire. Yes. And that yes. way you know, because all PEX lines, are, they're, they're not easy to find. Correct. Well, I have a lot of guys that, so if you're a one-man show, it's good, but if you've got somebody with you, you can have them take a tool and tap on that water meter, and the vibration of that sound will travel through that X, and another guy can kind of follow it with our equipment and just take listen to the ground and get a good idea right. at to where that PEX runs. Okay. I've had many customers that love that little trick. No, it, it does. It works. Mm-hmm. You isolate it, you find it, you dig it up, yep. you, you repair it. Then you then you listen along that line and you find that loudest location. Uh, and then kind of whenever I, I pinpoint it a little, I like to go a few feet one direction, a few feet the other direction, and see if those still sound the same, but they're still a little quieter than directly. Okay. To just help you, you get bet. a good gauge. You bet. And again, there's no adjustments. There's you no adjustments. Stick your tool so the That's it. You, okay. it Best adjustment you got is the volume control to get it to where you can hear it a little more clear if you need to. So so isolation is big. So if it's not in the yard, leave the valve box open at the house. 
go inside and I go straight to the water heater and isolate it, turn it off. Yep. That way I, c- I can tell real quick, is it on the hot side or is it on the cold side? Correct. At that point, once I know if it's on hot or cold, I go to every single valve in the house mm-hmm. and, and listen. Yep. And, and that's all I'm doing. I'm listening with water. It's just city water pressure. I'm not inducing air yet. I am literally going to every single angle stop. I'm pulling out refrigerators. I'm touching the ice maker line. I'm going around the outside of the building first, listening to all the hose bibs. Then I'm going, well, depending on if it's hot or cold. Uh, well, you never know. Let me <laughs> run a line hot. I've seen that yep. before. Yep. Uh, but, but I'm listening to everything. And predominantly on the lines that is the, if it's on the cold or hot, and I can determine yeah. it at the water here. But I also listen to the water heater, listen to the mm-hmm. inlet side, listen to the outlet side, listen to the TMP valve. Uh, a lot of people skip that. They'll, they won't walk all the way around the house. They'll get to the water heater and like, man, it's making noise. It's coming off the water heater somewhere. They never listen to the TMP valve. Yep. I've actually asked them before, have you gone outside to see where the TMP terminates? And they're like, no. It's like, go check me. like, why? I said, well, you said you're hearing it at the water here, but you're not hearing it anywhere else. They'll go outside and they'll be like, Roger, it's tripping. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a bad Hello. Hey, Ralph. Yes, sir. That's it. Once you isolate it, though, when you hear it loud, as say at the kitchen and the laundry room, mm-hmm. and they're 30 feet apart, uh, laundry room's behind that wall, kitchen is right over here. I always isolate the line. Yep. It's huge. Yeah. I've worked with plumbers that, Literally, just they would just want to walk in and say, "Okay, the the water lines here, the water lines there." It goes straight across. Let's dig a hole right here in the middle, and we'll go both ways. And I'm like, "Are you freaking killing me?" I like to isolate the line, go through. I will unplug refrigerators. I'll turn off air conditioners. I'll ask them to turn the TV off. I want the house as quiet as I can get it because all I want to hear is that water. Yep. Anything I'm missing there? One thing I'll throw in is whenever you go through the bathrooms and you go check the toilets. Close those angle stop because sometimes a leak at a home ended up just being a leaky toilet valve. Okay. So we like to do that just in case it is a slow draining toilet. It doesn't activate while you're actually trying right. to listen and throw. Then all of a sudden you hear it screaming somewhere and then it's gone. That's it. Yeah. And it throws off your actual locating. Makes work. sense. On. Makes sense. The. Again, one of my favorite things, you, you've got the sidekick, and we've mounted flashlights on them, we've mounted GoPros on them, we've mounted phones on them, we've mounted everything for video, to, that way we can show the customer yeah. look. Uh, we've plugged headphones in, plugged the, head, the output jack into a splitter, into the headphones, and into the phone or the GoPro, to say, look, we can record it with audio. We, we've done a, a lot of different modifications along the way. This is something most people can do themselves. Yeah. Just yeah. add, just make sure you're not drilling through the. That's it. Yeah. You you can take the cover plate off. Yeah. Take a look inside and get a good idea to where you would add our mounts, which is the same thing that we had to do originally yeah, before we ever. You, you don't want to drill through the PC board. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not a good idea. That's a rough. It's not going to work great. <laughs> they get in. They They do all this. And we're a little different in Texas. We normally try to tunnel up under houses. Mm-hmm. When it's a water line, because it's normally just a small spot repair. Yep. And, and a repair in Texas is you cut the pipe out and you replace it. Uh, braze joint. Yep. Uh, some manufacturers of press say, look, you can use us under slab. I prefer braze joint for reasons. Uh, but the the cool thing about it is you can do rerouting these days. You can trace the lines out with the tracer. Yep. And know where do they terminate? Open up that wall. There's a manifold in there. Cut your manifold apart. Look at what lines go down. Okay, this is the line that's leaking. Yep. Do it on this end. This is the line that's leaking. And now you can reroute that overhead and time back in. It's a lot of work. It is. Uh, it is. But but you know, leak detection is an expensive cost. It it, it, it takes is. a while. It is, and it does. But it can save you so much. Oh, absolutely. Because if you let it just the damage set, then it's it's it can get bad. <laughs> now it's it's funny because I, I talk about how expensive leak detection is, but the repairs are expensive. That's it. 
a lot of times the repairs are covered by insurance if especially if the plumber knows how to talk insurance mm -hmm. is what I call it. Uh, when adjusters call me and say, you know, how do you know this water leak caused this problem? Well, number one, it's a water leak. It's water damage. Hey, but they're still like, how can you prove it? I'm like, well, I can't. How can you prove to me it didn't? Cause I've been plumbing 40 years and I don't know how to prove that. So you show me how, you can prove it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they normally get really quiet at that point. I bet they do. Because they're like, okay, ain't no way to prove that either. Yep. All they want you to say is, I can't prove that it did. Okay, yeah. Then we yep. don't have to pay it. Yeah. Then yep. you show me how you prove it didn't. Yep. They don't like that. Yeah. Uh, Most people don't like when you turn the tables. <laughs> it, it is what it is. Uh, now, we built a training center. We did. We Pretty did. Pretty cool. It is. And I've got 11 leaks under a slab. Went ahead and threw one in outside of the slab just to get people used to how it sounds on yard leaks, too. So we got about an 1,800-square-foot pad. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, uh, an 1,800-square-foot pad, that's like a decent size house. Yes. How many leaks do we have in it? 11. 11 just under the slab. <laughs> and they're all located in different areas? Different areas, different spaces, different directions, different, all a little different, you know. Some are on top, some are on bottom, some are on the side. Yep. Some are deeper than others. Some are deeper than others. Therefore, a little harder to hear. Uh huh. Yeah. Makes it fun. Yeah. And then, you know, that's 1,800 square feet of not normal plumbing, so nobody knows where the pipes really are. And we're looking at installing a remote leak detection system on it, too. Yep. Which is something plumbers can say, hey, if you've ever had a leak, you need this installed because now this will let you know. That's it. Game changer. Big time. Big time. Especially on, like, the damages side that we were kind of talking earlier. It's being able to remotely detect without having to wait for the water company to call or you, to you, get you that bet. bill in the mail. If y'all's company don't, doesn't call for that bill to come in and you'd be like, wait, what, what is going on? Oh, hold on. There's gotta be a leak. I've had people, their water bills have tripled. That's it. That's it. They're, they're like, Hey, we, we, we were doing 200 gallons a day forever. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden it was a thousand gallons a day. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Got a pretty good leak. That's it. And it's like, oh, well, it looks like it started right after the last bill. So it's been going on for three weeks, four weeks. It's, it can get up there real quick. Real quick. Okay. Leak detection. Uh -huh. Anybody can pretty much do it. It does not have to be a licensed plumber. Am I right? It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it, it's a process. You walk, work that through that process. You can do your job. So, and I had this conversation with, with one of the plumbers that was in here. Uh, actually came, bought a kit. Yeah. Uh, picked it up and looked at the training center. Thought it was great. And then the conversation with me, I said, you know, you could take an apprentice that has shown some kind of knowledge along yeah. the way. Yeah. yeah. And bring them out here and teach them slab leaks and leak detection, put them in a van and they can go do leak detection because they're not tying into the plumbing system. Correct. Correct. For locating leak detecting, you don't have to have a license for it. You just need to know what you're doing. And like, and that's the problem that I get with some people that call, you know, they're like, well, how do, how do I know? That's why we're trying to do this training center so that you can come out here and get certified. We're going to promote you working towards promoting anybody that's been trained here on, on my side also. So that the people that do hear about us that are trying to find the service, I don't provide the service necessarily, but here, here's somebody I trained in your area as that gets built up. That'll be, that'll be a handy thing. Again, an apprentice, not a licensed plumber. Not a licensed plumber. That's well, what a great way to create a way for somebody coming in the trades to get into a revenue generating position where they're making money for the company 
they're not just coming in, sitting in a truck and watching for, for two years. To They come in and, and they can start generating revenue. Man, I, I say God within the first six months of plumbing, give them a couple of three months in the truck. Let them learn, see if they're going to show up every day, see if they're going to take this seriously. Then put them with a, one of your league detection plumbers yep. and then send them in for training to learn to do it learn the system and process in case your plumber didn't teach them that or send them out here for training first, then put them with the plumber so they can see it, carry their own equipment, follow them around and listen to them. It's just, it's a no brainer of a way to bring people into the trade yep. and put them in a revenue generating position from the get go early. Yeah. And good revenue. I mean, if you can keep him locating late, you're big enough to keep him busy all day, every day. Oh my gosh. We used to, whenever I still had the company, I believe we said, look, it's, it's a two hour minimum when we go out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say around seven fifty, seven hundred fifty dollars $750. We'll go out. We, we go through the steps we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Isolate everything, lay out everything, listen, uh, Sometimes the problems that you run into, there, there's a hardwood floor. Yep. It doesn't work through a hardwood floor, does it? No. But, I mean, nobody's no. does. That, that's it. That's it. It's, it's different. I still try because if that water's close enough to the slab that it's really hitting it or making a lot of noise, sometimes you can still hear through that. So, so I do. One thing I love about the, the League Pro Probe or the League Pro Sidekick is, you know, that rod is pointed i will stick it down through carpet yeah push it all the way yeah, under the slab just a little work it too uh-huh and and, and i mean i'm, I'm not i'm not making a big enough hole i'm not tearing correct. anything up uh if you've ever seen carpeting way there, there's a grill on the hmm. back and i just kind of get it and wiggle it and push it down in there yeah once i can tell i'm down on the slab squeeze the trigger and listen to it there and it makes a big difference but how you can hear through pretty good. Yeah. Concrete floors are amazing. Concrete floors, floors with a little linoleum on them yep. or fire. Sure. Yep. Uh, tile's good. Carpet, you can work with. Yeah. Yeah, you can get, a, you can, you can get through it. Hardwood so. floors are hard. I have seen plumbers before pull back carpet. Yep. Come in and say, hey, we need to pull the carpet back because we need to listen directly on the concrete. That's it. And, and, and I get that. The first plumber... That we went out to California and trained. Yeah. Bill. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Bill had two guys with him. Mm-hmm. They, we spent a whole day. You know, we, we've got training set up now where it's a two-day training. Yep. And we'll go into that in a minute. But Bill and them spent a whole day out there. Yep. One day. One of their guys was literally marking points <laughs> within four or five inches. Yep. Um, consistently. Correct. Correct. And man, just laid back about it. Just walk, 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 walk. Boom. There it is. And man, he was good. Yeah. One of the guys is a little off, but you know, he, he's not really listening. He's just kind of, he's goofing off. Laid back about it. Yeah. Yep. Laid back about it. Not bad. Not bad. You know, laid That's back it. about it. Yep. And some people were very laid back. They're like, correct. You know what? I'm going to find it. You know, sooner That's or later, it. I'm going to get close. Yep. Okay. And, you can be within a foot or two. You're still going to find it when you go to dig it up. That's right. Yeah. Like, what's the smallest hole you cut through a slab to, if, you, if you're cutting through the slab you, you, to do you a repair? Big enough to fix it. It's at least a two by two because you bet. I, I got to get through the hole too. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, mm-hmm. yes. In Texas, we tunnel. We do. We do. Freaks a lot of people out, <laughs> but we do it right. Uh, but the, the, the training. We teach people how to get really, really close. Or what? Yeah. So let's go back to Bill a minute. Yeah. Bill and them flying on a Thursday. We train on Friday. And they fly it all Saturday, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Isn't that what we did? Yeah. That's what it was back then. Took them to dinner Saturday night. Yep. Friday night. Yeah. Friday, Friday night. Yep. Bill was upset. It was out in the heat. It was in Morongo Valley, California. There was plenty of shade, but not enough for him. Yep. So yeah. Should have yep. been a little better. Uh-huh. Should have been air conditioned. We're going to turn off the air conditioners anyway. Said y'all should be really more open about this is out in the middle of nowhere. It, we, we were expecting this mass indoor training center in 
th this is not a nice indoor training center, is it? I don't want it to be a indoor training center where every sound is isolated outside of your space. Like the thing that I did enjoy about the desert training, you had planes flying over. You had these external sounds to kind of help teach you to tune everything out. This is the sound you're listening to Bauer. Like I've had guys ask me about the training here. Well, how is it? Hey, look, I'm I'm in Texas. It's all outdoor. You know, so think about that about your booking when you, you want to try to book. You want to come in the middle of summer? Okay, but be ready for the heat. I'll have water. I'll have plenty of water. Don't and worry. shade. I've been in Texas a long time. That's it. We'll have shade. Only out in the elements when you're actually loving. You bet. So not bad. But I want those external sounds going on, you know, because a lot of guys ask, you know, well, what if you're right next to a bunch of cars dri driving by and stuff? Well, you know, look, you got to deal with it. Occasionally, I mean, I had to find a leak one time in a casino. Casinos don't stop. So when do you go to try to find that leak? Look, guys, what's y'all's slowest time of the week? That's when I need to attempt to try this so that I can tune all of that out, but I at least know it won't be the loudest point of the week. It will attempt to be the quietest. I did manufactured home communities, and I've done probably 20 different properties, mm -hmm. 6,000 homes. I tell them, here's my schedule, and, and this, is, this, this is something I don't tell everybody. I literally would work around the clock, mm -hmm. okay? Because when I do that, I go out of town. Yep. The best time for me to hear is at night. Yes. When most people aren't doing laundry, aren't doing dishes, aren't taking showers, aren't watching TV, yep. all the noises. Because literally, all these units were submetered. I had to climb up under manufactured homes yeah. in the middle of the night. Some of them aren't the most amazing communities in the world to live in. And I mean, I've had people start yelling, grab the gun, grab the gun. So I'm side of the house. I'm yeah. like, wait a minute, y'all. We're supposed to tell y'all, don't shoot the white man <laughs> in the yellow vest. <laughs> don't get the plumber. Yeah, you know, yeah, please don't shoot the plumber. <laughs> Literally, I would, and, and man, this is where I fell in love with Leak Pro. Yeah. Because imagine crawling under a manufactured home with headphones, the wire coming off it to a unit. This big bulky unit, the wire coming off the, it to your your wand, your probe, whatever it is, and you're trying to crawl around on your hands and knees and get into where the water meter is. Yeah, because most of the meters are, are up under the unit. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I would literally, and man, I'm going to give you all my tricks here. I would tell the property manager, you need to have your maintenance guy go to every one of these units and remove the skirt nearest the meter because yep. they go by and read these meters yep yeah so they know right where they're at where it is yeah and, and some of the units are marked they tell me well they're marked i don't care you don't want me pulling off the skirt at two o'clock in the morning upsetting your that's residence right. yes so i would walk up to a house look for the spot where the skirt's not there climb under i i wore headlamps i carried the leak pro probe that way it i mean the leak pro sidekick that way, it is just a wand in my hand and a cord from my headphones. That's it. And I can crawl around on my elbows. Yeah. I, I don't have to worry about holding this unit up to keep it from dragging the ground. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Made a lot of good money doing it. Because I would tell people that I work from 10 o'clock at night to 6 or 7 in the morning. Yep. I would go to the hotel, take a shower, go to sleep, wake up, be back at the job 10 o'clock. During the day, or midday. now I'm listening to fire hydrants. I'm listening to the, the valves, the main valves. I'm listening to anything and everything that I can. I'm going to the meter. I'm watching the meter, watching the vault, watching the bypass meter. I'm listening to everything. I'm, I'm checking flows. I, I'm doing all kinds of stuff. Yep. Do that all day till about 6 o'clock at night. Go eat dinner. Take a shower, go to sleep. Be back out at 10 o'clock. Here I go again. Yep. So I sleep three or four hours, go to work eight or 10. Yep. Sleep three or four hours, go to work eight or 10. Yeah. That's the way I did it. That's it. But man, it worked because when you've got a property that has 
three or 400 manufactured homes on it, you need to get under every one of them. So, and it, it's funny because I had no training at that point. It was okay. Yeah. I've, I've got equipment and I, and I guess I did, I guess I'd gone to some training. But their training is mainly how to find it in a yard or on a slab. Okay, this is completely different. We're like yeah. crawling around under homes and yada, 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 which is great because then I could make a list. I always had a map of the property so I could circle the ones that, that made noise. Yeah. And like that third night or fourth night, depending on how many days I was there. And oh, by the way, I charged them overtime hours for the night work. Yeah. Uh, I also charged travel time to get there because this equipment you don't want to throw into checked security bag yep. where you don't know what, if you're going to throw it around or what they're going to do. So, and we've designed it a little different. So we'll we kind of prepared for that, but I needed it in my Jeep or my truck. So I'd charge them drive time. I charge them drive time both ways. Yep. I charge them per diems for, for meals, for hotels, for, for all this. And, and look, it, it's adds up quick. for me to go out of town for three or four days, $25,000. That's it. And they're like, man, this is a lot of money. It's like, well, how much money are you losing every month on your water bill? Yeah. But I always found the leaks. I yeah. always found the problems. And I remember Bill mm-hmm. coming in. They go back home Saturday, Sunday. You get a call on Monday. Yep. Slab leak. Yep. Sends the guy out who's marking points really good. Sold the first slab leak job for $21,000. Yeah. You just made your money back. That's it. You bought your equipment. You paid for your training. You did everything in one, one job. Yep. How do you have the training set up now? Because you you went out yep. to Morongo Valley uh-huh. to learn how to train. Yep. You trained with Terry, the, mm-hmm. the founder of the company. You learned how to build all the units. And you learned to do the training. I did. How did you go through all that process? So I went out there uh, and just... Acted like somebody that didn't know anything, kind of, you know, Terry, t- teach me how to use this. So I slowly went through his training, which was kind of pull out the book, read the book. Here, we're just going to follow step the step by step by step. Follow the book. Yep. And the main reason he w- wanted it that way is so that everybody knew if you were out there struggling, trying to find something, pull out your book, go through the steps, which is cool. I like that. I'm a little more hands on type. I pick up as you're telling me and I'm doing. So I learned some things reading from a book, but it doesn't all sink in and set 100% for me there. It's the hands-on part that helps me. So I've geared my training more to where I'm going to talk you through the exact process that you read in that. And that's all it is. It's a process that you actually work through. But training here, it's not just going to be your slab leaks. We're going to do some line locating. Out there at the old training center, it was, up. Oh, here it is. Here's the house. Here's exactly where the lines run. Find the leaks on it. I we did it a little bit. I want to teach somebody how to do leak detection. What's a part of that? Sometimes it's line locating. So here, let's, let's learn with a locator here just so you kind of have a good idea to how to do that. So I've set the training up to teach somebody that knows nothing or somebody who has experience. Either way, it's fine. So we do line locating. Then we actually do leak detection. We've got the 11 leaks under the slab to get used to how it sounds there. We've got one out under grade just for that. But then also there's a second day of training here now. We've increased it even more. This is the part that I got to be a big part. Now this part is is amazing. So this you is my specialty. Me. You showed me. That's it. I was going to say this one was never one of my specialties ever till now. You bet. So amazing. Sewer isolation test. Mm -hmm. Feeding test balls up a sewer main and into a branch line to isolation. You bet. Isolate lines to go, look, this one's the one I got to replace. I don't have to replace your whole system. No, 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 no. Right. We're not going to that extent. Just here. This is where we're. And and it's funny because I literally, I thought about this back when I got a call from a plumbing forensics person. An attorney who was a plumber, used to okay. be a plumber. Yeah. And he called me one day and he says, look, I've, I've seen your videos online. He said, if there's a leak under a house, does that mean the whole sewer line needs to be replaced? I'm like, no. He said, well, that's not what they're saying out here in California. I mean, yeah, out here in Florida. I said, what do you mean? 
He says, well, they're supposedly doing a test, saying there's a leak somewhere, and they're running a camera through it, and they're saying all the piping needs to be replaced. I said, "How? why are they saying that? And he said, well, they said that by running that camera through, they can see that the walls of the pipe are thin. All right. Okay. I said, okay. I said, do me a favor. I said, look at the wall. Are you in a room? Logical question. Yeah. yeah. He said, yeah. I said, look at the wall next to you. He said, okay. I said, how thick is that wall? I said, I don't know. I said, you mean you can't tell by looking? He said, no. I said, so what makes you think you can run a camera down a piece of pipe and look at the wall and tell how thick it is? Yeah. There better be some holes for you to be able to see that. Yeah. And you know, then you know, <laughs> then you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God. He said, I never thought about that. He said, do you want to move? That was it Orlando or Miami. He said, do you want to move out here? You'll get rich. I said, no, I'm doing fine where I'm at. Yeah. He said, they are literally telling people that their entire sewer needs to be replaced. I said, look, I'm not saying it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Because it could, it, you, could you know? it could. I don't it's, know what they saw. It, it's 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 possible, but with what they said, yeah. The, know, well, what they said does not add up. Yep. And he's literally like, Roger, if you'll come out here, yeah. I said I understand, but I can do it. I'll tell everybody to use you. Yep. Yeah, I I can do it here. Yeah. I get it. That's it. The insurance companies are just writing checks right and left. Yeah. Well, the plumber said all all day every day. Yep. I love the fact that that we have built a training center. That not only teaches water, which water is the big one. Correct. Water costs us a lot of money. Especially here here in Texas. The way the ground shifts. You bet. That's it. And all our houses in Texas are slab on grade. Yes. We don't have basements. It's not like you just walk down the basement, look up, say, yep, there's a leak. All right. That's it. But to teach the sewer line also, I remember some of the plumbers from Rescue Air coming out. And they looked at what they were, what we're building, and they're like, "Oh my God, Roger, I need to go through this." Yeah. yeah. And it's like, but 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 you do that, and it's like, yeah, but I've never been trained on it like this. This is amazing. That's it. And it, even Josh, my partner, Josh came out, and I showed him once we had it built, and he's like, "Now I see why you've been so excited. Yeah. Now I understand what you're doing." And, and to me. To build a plumbing training center that has never been built before is amazing. Yes. This literally, a guy can take a plumber. We train up to three at a time. That's it. Up to three at once. Bring out three plumbers and put them through this training. You buy the equipment. You go through the, the training. Literally. One of those plumbers can go back the next week and sell a job that'll cover the cost of all of it. Yeah. Every bit of it. Just about every time, man. It, you're adding income. It's what you're doing. And, and, and you know, w- w- we talk about revenue, uh, uh, how it, how it, how the jobs are built, how, how to price them, how to do different things like that. Yep. The whole thing boils down to, Lori, you're improving the value of your plumbing company. You're improving your service to your customer. You're growing your bottom line. Your revenue can can become pretty much whatever you want it to become. How much do you want to advertise that you're doing slab leak location, leak detection, slab leak repair, that you're doing all these things? To be honest, if a company wants to grow the bottom line of their revenue, this is probably one of the quickest ways to get in and learn how to use Leak Pro, go through the training, learn how to locate leaks, learn how to find leaks, learn how to repair leaks, learn how to price those repairs, learn how to do sewer line isolation and testing. I mean, to be honest, again, I'll give everybody one of my biggest tips and tricks. I started growing a plumbing company by going out and talking to real estate agents saying, we do whole house water and sewer tests. Yep. And if you're not doing that for your buyer on every house they attempt to purchase, you're crazy. Yep. Because most houses have leaks under them. That's it. On the sewer line or water line. Yep. 
and you can go out and do a simple test. I think at the time we were charging 375 450 something like that. Yeah. You'd go out, you'd spend an hour at a, ha- at a house, you'd fill up the sewer line. So you put a mm-hmm. test ball in, you fill up the sewer line, fill it to the top, turn the water off, turn the meter off, time everything for 15 minutes. Did the water level drop on the house? Did the pressure drop on the, on the gauge on the house? Yep. Clean everything up and get out of there. That's it. Now, if there's a leak, now you go to the seller and say, look, this isn't horrible. Here's what I found. Have you ever had any water damage at all in your house from the water line, sewer line, whatever it is? Because if so, it should be covered by insurance. Yeah. And man, we teach the plumbers how to talk insurance. That's awesome. That's awesome. This is a game changer for companies. Mm -hmm. When, when you can take a product and service, the service normally sells, but the repair, and and I'm not even going what you can make just on, on doing the, 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 the location and, and isolation and all that. Yep. The 750 ish. What we used to charge is probably more than that by now, but We'd come in and tell companies, look, to do a complete sewer line isolation, that's a day's worth of work. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's a slow, tedious process, but it pays off in the big picture. Yeah, you get By one far. big repair. Yep. You, you know, the, 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 the work that we're talking about here, slab leak repairs are anywhere from, I'm going to say starting at $7,500 up to $150,000. That's why you hope it's covered by insurance. Yes. You, you, you really do. Yep. If the cup house has ever had foundation problems, if it's ever had water come up out of the floor, if it's ever had just water damage at the, at the, the, on the slab, mm-hmm. meaning for some reason the carpet got wet for a while or, hey, I don't know what's happening, but, but the crown molding starts getting soaked and wet and swollen. It's probably a slab leak. Yep. And to be able to come in and look at it, test it, verify it, prove it, it works great. That's it. And then on the waterline leaks, which we didn't even talk about, once we think we found them, we go back and put air in the system to get that boiling noise to ver- guarantee that's exactly where it is. Yes, sir. That's a very, very distinct noise. You bet you are listening for it. And to help your point. Then we didn't just check it, but we double Fair checked right. it. That's right. Pretty cool stuff. Yes, sir. What's your favorite thing about doing this? Building stuff and teaching people. Like the old thing they used to say, you know, do do you take a guy fishing or do do you teach him how to fish so that he can provide? I want to teach people a skill. And that's what this is. It's teaching them a skill so that they can provide over time, help their customers along the way. And let's let's save water on this planet because that's that's what it's about. Fixing every leak we can, not wasting well, and that's why I literally, you know, at the time you had two daughters and I go to a plumber's continuing ed and the guy's down front talking to them there early and he's talking. He said, you know, our grandchildren are not going to have access to water the way we did. Actually, he said our children and our grandchildren yeah. will not have access to the water the way we did. Yep. Now, when I was growing up, we never had to conserve water. You never had to, water was never rationed. Wouldn't think you had not, a, didn't have days that you couldn't turn it on or anything like that. And we go through that now just about every summer. Yeah. And, you know, especially Texas and California, it's huge because we've got the most population. But I remember him standing down front and saying that exact thing. Yep. Our, our, our children and our grandchildren will not have access to water the way we do. And I'm automatically thinking of Brandy and Mandy. And I thought, what, what can I do? to help make sure they have more access to water. Yep. We've got the same amount of water on the planet we had when dinosaurs roamed it. Yep. It's never going to change. But we got more and more people every single year. Yep. That's what I love about this. It's saving water. But now we've got something we can introduce to plumbers and plumbing company owners to, to grow their revenue. Yep. And help save water at the same time to quit subbing it out to somebody else that, that 
may have a plumbing company on the side. That, that's the big And may like, steal the customers from you. Like a lot of guys that I've talked to, you know, they're, they're kind of like, well, you know, what, like, what do you, what do you think about me learning this? It's like, look, I can remember back when we did something, yeah. had, had some locating guys come out and find some leaks for us or whatever, because we were busy with other things at the time. But then, oh, that, that job disappeared yeah. for some reason somehow. Oh. It, their cousin who's also a plumber got that job. That's it. So yeah. be able to do it yourself. It, that helps your customer too. A lot of guys, leak detectors. Oh yeah, I, I can have somebody come look at it. Oh, that's two weeks. Oh, that's four weeks. Oh, that's five weeks. These people need to use their water. They don't need to go out and shut it, turn it on to use it real quick. Turn it off. I had a lady do that for a year and a half. I determined where her leak was. She literally heard her husband. For a year and a half, went and turned on the water when they needed it, turned it off. Turned it on, turned it off. A year and a half. Wow. I didn't call back and said, hey, I'm ready for you to come fix that. Like, well, we probably need to look and see, is there Change any it. other leaks by now or whatever? And and the price had gone up because our, our costs went up. Yep. And she's like, well, that's not the price you told us a year and a half ago. It was like, yeah, I know. But but our decrew crew price has doubled. Everything's gone up. And she was heartbroken. But I'm like, look, I'm sorry. Here, here's what it is. You know, another thing, too, we're going to build a pool to do training on a swimming yes. pool because that's another thing. Number one, apprentices can go out, finally do the work. Yep. Pool work's not licensed, so yep. it's easy to do in most places. This has been pretty cool. This has been fun. Uh, this has been a great ride. Yes. You know, everything I've started trying to acquire this company five years ago. Yep. About. God, it's probably been longer now. I met Terry six years ago, next month. Yeah. Okay. No, six years ago this month. Yeah. Yeah. March. I met Terry six years ago, the beginning of March. Nice. March the 2nd. Oh, yeah. So just over six years. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's awesome. Pretty neat. He's a cool guy. Man, he is. It's, it's a great product. Uh-huh. Love the product. And, and that was my biggest asset request is, Terry, look, if if I don't get this, your product goes away when yeah. you die. Yeah. And the day I met him, he says, I'm 85 years old, like I die any day. Yep. He, he says, all my friends are dead, so. He still tells me. I know, I know, same story. <laughs> well, Squirt, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. It's been great. Uh, if people want to learn more about the training, more about the product, more about you, where they go? And go to www.leak-pro.com. You can, there's a number there you can get in touch with me at. You can send a message on there or you can book my time. Uh, you can set up a Calendly and we can have a Zoom and I'll give you a rundown on everything you need to know. Cool deal. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right.